part on the right does not have any fertilizer on it for two years. Last year was wheat and flax planted together. Harvested them. And about a 10-way cover crop mix was planted immediately after harvest. And we'll get into that field here. Uh, here, we're going in the corn. Сорняки. Посеял сын Рика. Норма высева здесь 24 тысячи на акр. Или что он один? Он под землей, он уперся в камень. See how soft the soils are? Just slide it in by by weight. Very sandy. Посмотрите, насколько песчаная здесь почва. Не на большой слой плодородный. Угу. We'll try and get down here. Это не слоями глины, это все глина. Здесь уже поменьше плодородный слой. Centimeters, right? Peel a couple in back, right? Yeah. Corn husk, yeah. corn. Yeah. Organica. Organica. You got any corn there? Oh yeah. Видно, что что-то Да. This field has not had a herbicide on it for 18 months. No insecticide. No fungicide, no fertilizer, nothing. So do I need to have fertilizer placement on my cedar? Need to have balanced biology. When we did soil tests on this land, it showed I had 64 units of nitrogen per hectare available. Okay, if I want to grow 150 bushel corn, which is about seven or eight ton of corn, use eight ton as a eight ton. Если я хочу вырастить около семи с половиной I would need another hundred units of nitrogen applied. Мне нужно как-то дополнительно вносить азот. But when I do a total Nutrient content in my soil. 
но, но у меня моя почва, она полностью содержит все, что нужно. It shows I have two and a half tons of nitrogen in this field per hectare. Что означает, что здесь на гектар у меня две с половиной тонны азота. It is not plant available nitrogen though. Но это не весь этот азот, он доступен для растений. The only way I can get it to become available is to go through the gut of some kind of biology, the stomach, the intestine is some kind of biology. И как же мне сделать этот азот доступным для растений? Мне нужно, чтобы в почве была для этого необходимая биота. So we tested this for biology. Поэтому, соответственно, мы здесь провели анализ почвенной биоты. How much bacteria is there, both positive and negative? Сколько бактерий позитивных, негативных, в каком содержании? How much fungus is there, both saprophytic and symbiotic? Как много грибов, симбиотических и симпатических. And when them numbers become in balance, и когда их норма сбалансировалась, now my protozoa show up. And the protozoa are the mineralizers of the soil. They make the two and a half tons of nitrogen I have out here become available to the plants. Moment by moment. Шаг за шагом, момент, момент за моментом. When you apply fertilizer, а когда вы добавляете удобрение, it's there, and then it goes down. Сначала уровень достаточно высокий, а затем then you apply fertilizer, and it goes down. Затем вы опять вносите удобрение, и уровень опять постепенно These guys are constantly supplying fertilizer. И поэтому возникает необходимость постоянного вносения удобрений. It's simple. And it's very, very economical. It's about everything. I have the, I have the data in the bus. I forgot to bring it out. I have that in there. It's about everything. You see? Uh, we do. But we did not on this field. Because this is my experimental field. We're going to see what Mother Nature can do for us. And this is what Mother Nature is doing for us. And this is what Mother Nature is doing for us. And, uh, speaking, speaking about other fields, do you use uh, fertilizers? Some seed, uh, some seed for seed. Do you treat the seed somehow? We we have to buy our seed, or most all of our seed that we get in America has got a neonicotinoid on the seed. We buy seed, and practically all the seeds we buy are already We'll go buy some fields where we have half the field fertilized and half the field not fertilized. And you cannot tell the difference. You see, ladies and gentlemen, a plant cannot take a nutrient up into its body without biology. It cannot take water into its body without, with into, into the plant without biology. То же самое растение не может забирать воду без помощи почвенной биоты. Just as you and I can sit in a bathtub, and if we don't drink water, we're going to thirst to death. То же самое можно провести параллель с людьми. 
если мы не будем пить воду, соответственно, мы умрем просто от жажды. We have to take it in through our mouth. Мы должны ну, пить, пить воду, то есть как Plants, через, через, растения, через ну, вот. Plants do not have mouths. А у растений рта нет, не бывает. Через корень пьют, понятно. Ой, жалко. They have roots. Но у них есть корни. Ага. Какая And хорошая корневая, да? No. Не очень? Roots have skins on them. See all the juice in there? And the skin holds it in. The only way a plant can take something into its plant is mycorrhizal fungus invades cells. Единственный способ, которым растения могут сделать, это используя микоризные грибы. And as it invades those cells, it becomes the defender of that cell also. И когда у нас этот вид грибов поселяется здесь, он становится не только захватчиком, но и в то же время одновременно защитником. Вот, кстати, про микоризы. Because it knows that cell is going to feed it the carbon molecule. Потому что тут у нас будут образовываться молекулы углерода. And as it gets the carbon molecule from the plant, it feeds the plant the phosphorus and the zinc and the nitrogen. И получается, что у нас происходит питание растений и азотом, и фосфором, и цинком. But this plant, this root right here, cannot absorb anything. Но вот как раз этот корень, который вы видите, он не может в себя ничего впитывать, абсорбировать. It has to have biological colonization to be absorbed. Для этого нужна какая-либо биологическая колония здесь поселиться. So, what we like to have happen here, is see how I have a massive amount of roots at the soil surface. And if I can keep my, if I can keep my sunlight off the soil so my soil temperature doesn't get very warm, И если я смогу регулировать температуру почвы для того, чтобы она сильно не не прогревалась. These roots just stay right here all the time. И эти корни могут остаться здесь все время. If I get 10 millimeters of rain, they can absorb it. И если у меня будет примерно около 10 миллиметров дождя, то они все это питают. But if my soil surface gets too hot, too warm, the roots grow down like this. Но если поверхность будет сильно прогреваться, тогда корни пойдут вниз. Now if I get 10 mils of rain, they cannot absorb it. И соответственно, если у меня будут те же самые 10 миллиметров дождя, почва уже просто не сможет их питать себя. Right at the soil surface is where all my mineralization is taking place. Получается, все процессы минерализации у меня идут на поверхности почвы. It's the most nutrient dense area in the field. То есть это самое здесь самое большое содержание на поле на поле питательных веществ. So that's where I want them to be. Это как раз то, что мне нужно, чего хочу добиться. We'll look under the soil surface here in a little bit. Сейчас мы посмотрим немного на то. And we'll see what happens below the ground with those roots also. Did you find anything? <laughs> hey, that isn't what I asked you, Ryan. Yeah. This has got 26 years of no-till. This field. This field. That's not a very good. Keep hitting stones. Yeah, I did too. 
that top inch and a half with like heat moss. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see my plates? Plate, 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 plate. It's not good. Okay. Because you have roots. And wherever plates are at, see all the corn roots? And that was right in the middle of the row. Right here. That is not a compaction issue. That's where biology has died. Because I have a monoculture growing here. And I'm not feeding all those colonies of biology that you've seen out there in the native rangeland. Last summer we had these plates also in our wheat field. We planted a very diverse cover crop out here after the wheat. And, and the plates disappear instantly. Because the diversity allows more biology to be alive. When anything moves, anything moves, cattle or humans or anything, when you move, people either move out of your way or they resist. When I went first, everybody moved. And when you have diversity below the ground, your biology, all these different families move around and things get out of their way or things come and want to eat them. And if they eat them, that's good. Because then I get nutrients for my plants. If they move out of the way, that's good. Because that eliminates compaction. Understand? Okay, let's get on the bus.